This doesn't flash like lightning or roar like wind. It doesn't crash onto rooftops or blind you with shine. It slips past unnoticed, cold, constant, carving its way through rock, time, and memory. And buried inside that silence is power. If we look at one of our turbines, which is five meters in diameter, you would need a whole soccer field of solar panels to generate the same amount of energy. Not in towering dams or grand machines, but in quiet eddies and streambed spirals. A revolution is moving through the water, one that doesn't need height or force to change everything. Because when energy flows without destruction, it becomes something else, something we've overlooked until now. Look closer. The river isn't just running, it's whispering, and someone has finally listened. The cracks in the dam. They were once monuments to progress, icons of engineering that tamed rivers, powered cities, and flooded postcards with national pride. But many of those dams are now old, quietly, dangerously old. In the United States alone, about 95% of hydropower systems were built before 1995, over half run on components designed more than 80 years ago. And when these massive structures fail, they don't just stop working. They break rivers, displace communities, and sometimes take lives with them. Failures aren't rare. They're routine. An average of 10 U.S. dams break every year. Most don't make international headlines, but their impacts echo through local ecosystems and water systems for years. Some failures poison drinking water. Others force emergency evacuations. All of them cost millions. And it's not just about failure. It's about fragility. As climate patterns shift, dams that once held steady are now pushed past their design limits. Rising rainfall, flash floods, and droughts test every crack and every outdated sensor. These are the weak seams of an aging dream. Massive hydro once symbolized human dominance over nature. But the story is changing, and the future of water power may lie not in towering dams, but in smaller, smarter streams. Thinking smaller, powering more. What if energy didn't need to be massive to be meaningful? What if it could live beside you, tucked into a riverbank, humming quietly, asking for nothing but a steady current? That's the idea behind small hydropower, or SHP. It's not flashy. No sweeping spillways or turbine halls are echoing with thunder. But there is power, local, consistent, and surprisingly scalable. SHP refers to systems that generate under 10 megawatts of electricity. That's small by traditional standards, but big enough to power hundreds, sometimes thousands, of homes. Unlike large dams, SHP doesn't need to dam rivers, flood valleys, or relocate communities. It can be built into irrigation canals, narrow rivers, and even tidal flows. Its greatest strength is its minimalism, fewer materials, less disruption. And it works in places where big hydro never could. Remote villages, mountainous regions, or off-grid areas where energy access is unreliable or non-existent. As climate resilience becomes critical, the ability to decentralize power generation matters more than ever. SHP turns waterways into lifelines, not just for energy, but for self-sufficiency. You don't need a monumental wall to harness water. Sometimes, all it takes is knowing where and how to listen to the current. The Hidden Math of Falling Water Water doesn't just move, it falls. And in that fall is energy. The deeper the drop, the more potential there is to turn gravity into electricity. Engineers call it hydraulic head, a measure of how far water descends before hitting a turbine. Think of it as water's version of altitude. The greater the head, the greater the energy. At the end of this spectrum sits the Itaipu Dam. Towering 196 meters high and stretching nearly 8 kilometers across the Parana River, it's one of the largest hydroelectric projects on Earth. Its 20 turbines can produce 14 gigawatts, enough to power most of Paraguay and a significant slice of Brazil. But size has a cost. Itaipu submerged vast ecosystems, erased entire waterfalls, and displaced over 60,000 people. It's a symbol of power, yes, 
but also of what must be sacrificed to achieve it. HP takes a different path. It doesn't chase height. Some systems operate with heads as low as one meter. Instead of brute force, they use design precision and local flow. A small fall, a smart turbine. And suddenly, what once seemed powerless becomes a source of constant renewable energy. Because even a small drop can change everything. Vortex Hydro's bladeless revolution. Most turbines spin with blades. Obvious, right? Blades catch the water, drive a shaft, and spin a generator. That's how it's worked for over a century. But what if you removed the blades entirely? What if the water spun itself? That's exactly what Vortex Hydro did. Their Seater turbine doesn't slice through water, it dances with it. Inspired by the swirling motion of natural whirlpools, the design came from Czech researcher Miroslav Sedlacek and his team. They studied the tiny eddies formed in rivers and bathtub drains and asked, can this natural motion become power? Seater's magic lies in its rolling flow. Water enters and starts to spiral, creating a vortex inside a smooth, circular shell. Within that shell is a rotor, not with blades, but shaped to roll like a basketball circling the rim. The movement is fluid, elegant, and surprisingly efficient. It doesn't disturb fish, it doesn't require a dam, and it works with as little as one meter of drop. What started as a curious question, how to generate electricity without cutting the water, became a real product. One that fits in rivers, canals, and even ocean currents. Sometimes the best way forward isn't sharper, it's softer. Quiet power in shallow streams. The Situr doesn't demand much. It doesn't need a deep river, a roaring fall, or heavy construction. All it asks for is moving water and a bit of space beneath the surface. That's where it hides, quietly spinning, almost invisible to the world above. There are two main models. The Situr M is rated at 500 watts, peaking at 750. It's small, but in a flowing stream, it can produce over 6,000 kilowatt hours per year. Enough for basic lighting, refrigeration, or local equipment. The larger Sector L reaches 7.5 kilowatts, capable of powering dozens of homes annually, especially in regions where demand is lower than the U.S. average. Installation is simple, no reservoir, no dam. The turbine rests below the waterline using the natural flow. It can even operate at depths of 20 to 50 meters depending on the model. All it needs is a steady stream and minimal hydraulic head, but it's not perfect. Cold climates limit its use. Freezing water can jam the system without proper safeguards. Debris and fish require intake screens. Even quiet systems must live alongside nature responsibly. Still, for isolated communities or low-impact grids, the CETER offers something rare, reliable energy without scars on the landscape. Turbulent spiral of innovation. It doesn't look like a turbine. From above, it resembles a shell, maybe a coiled pipe. But inside this spiral lives something powerful and gentle. Turbulent, a Belgian company, designed it for energy and ecology. Their vortex turbine guides water in a smooth curve, forming a whirlpool that spins a rotor. No sudden drops, just a controlled spiral that generates electricity and lets fish swim through. The smallest version needs just 1.5 meters of drop and 1.5 cubic meters per second of flow. Modest, but scalable. Install several and the power adds up, and it happens without harming the river. One turbine in Bali powers the green school, installed in a single day. It sits invisibly in the Ayung River, generating energy while leaving nature untouched. What makes Turbulent different isn't just performance, it's restraint, no barriers, no violence, just flowing water doing what it always does, only now it lights a classroom. Big dams versus small flows. Big dams deliver big power. Itaipu produces 14 gigawatts, enough for much of Paraguay and Brazil. But what those numbers hide is loss. Years of construction, whole ecosystems flooded, tens of thousands displaced. Compare that to turbulence system in Bali, 13 kilowatts, installed in a day. No destruction, just power from a bend in the river, lighting a school without harming the environment. 
Large Hydro has strengths, reliability, lifespan, and volume. But it's also rigid and expensive. Failures can be catastrophic. Even operationally, they block fish, trap sediment, and break ecosystems apart. SHP trades strength for flexibility. It scales with local needs. It installs quickly. It doesn't scar the landscape. And it brings power closer to the people who need it most. The choice isn't only about electricity, it's about values. SHP asks a different question. Can we power progress without overpowering nature? A future in the current. In 2019, small hydropower reached 78 gigawatts worldwide. That's far behind solar and wind, but full of untapped potential. Countless rivers and channels remain unused, not due to limits, but outdated thinking. HP isn't here to replace other renewables. It fills gaps. Water flows when the sun sets and the wind stalls. SHP brings stability, especially in hybrid systems where consistency matters most. Organizations like Unido support SHP expansion in underserved regions. Startups like Vortex and Turbulent prove innovation doesn't need megawatts to matter. The future might not be a single megagrid. It could be thousands of small, resilient systems, interconnected, adaptive, and local. SHP doesn't roar. It doesn't glow on a graph, but it's steady. And in a world chasing stability, that might just be its greatest strength. This wasn't about conquering nature. It never was. It was about learning to listen to the quiet rush beneath a bridge, the swirling eddy behind a rock, the steady current that never needed a dam to matter. Small scale hydropower doesn't demand attention. It doesn't ask for monuments, but it offers something big projects often can't balance between power and place between progress and preservation. The river has always been speaking, not in megawatts, but in motion, in rhythm, in the possibility. And now, finally, we're answering, one turbine at a time.